If you're working on a painting and you're looking to add that out of focus blurry lens effect like I have in the background here, I'll show you why an airbrush is without a doubt my favorite tool for painting this in. Like many of you that I've talked to here on YouTube, I also come from a drawing and oil painting background. And while this blurry background effect can definitely be painted or drawn in, it's just a lot of work and requires a ton of blending. And before I start this one, I just want to say that I'm aware that this video is not going to get that many views. Those of us using an airbrush to paint pictures, fine art, whatever you want to call it, are few and far between. There's not many of us. I would say that the majority of people that use an airbrush or paint with one really do it to paint models or paint miniatures, and most of those involved in art are using oil paints. And so this video is really for those of you like me who just wanna paint and are gonna use any tool necessary to get the job done. The reason that I use an airbrush is because it allows me to do more than I've ever been able to do with any other medium. There's no other reason. If some new tool came along that allowed me to paint better and gave me more control, I'd switch over to that in a heartbeat without any regrets. But at this point in my life and in painting, my favorite tool just happens to be the airbrush. So that's what I'll stick with and I'll show you why it's so special within this video. I'm not sure if anyone watching this can relate to that idea of just wanting to paint that one picture that makes you feel good enough and using any tool available to get there, but I hope so. And of course I never actually will get there, but I'll just keep on trying and I think that's what we're all trying to do in art. Let's start this demo and focus on what the airbrush really shines at and that's that blurry out of focus look. In last week's video we finished up the portrait, so I'm going to start on the right side here within this background. The color in my airbrush is a transparent color of 70% moss green, 20% black, and then reduced about 10% with distilled water. You could use any airbrush that you'd like for this. You'll see here that I'm using the Iwata Revolution. This airbrush has a larger nozzle size of 0.5 and that's going to be helpful because it's going to spray that paint out and give really nice soft blends. I'm following in my initial line drawings. You can see my pencil lines underneath and I'm just sketching in the darker areas that I'm noticing. For this entire background, I'm only going to be doing this freehand. I'm not using any shields or any type of masking. And that's very important because it's going to allow the airbrush to do what it does best, which is to give you those very soft, smooth transitions. We don't have to worry about blending any of this paint because the airbrush is going to do all of that for us. It's atomizing the paint and it's always going to give us a soft gradient. As long as I do this freehand, you know, no shields, no masks, and I hold it a little bit farther away from the canvas, maybe about five inches or so, the airbrush is always going to give me those soft gradients. On the left side of the screen right now, I'm placing up the reference that I used to paint this in. The woman in this painting isn't actually in a forest next to a tree. I set that all up in Photoshop using different images. And so for the right side, I took a stock image of a forest, cropped out a part of it, put it in the background, and then set a Gaussian blur on it just to kind of blend it back. The goal of this was just to kind of mimic that lens effect, that bokeh effect where you have a wide aperture and the subject is sharp and in focus and then the background gets very blurry. And I did the same thing for the tree on the left side of the screen. I found a different image. I cut out that tree trunk, placed it in, and then put a Gaussian blur on it and just didn't blur it as much. Just kind of left it a little bit more in focus. If you take a look at the reference photo, I'm painting this area first. I'm just starting from the top left and then working my way over to the right and then down. I think it's easier to get a sense of what I'm doing if I just slightly speed up the video. So that's what I'm doing here. And as I'm looking at that part of the reference, I'm not thinking to myself that this is a forest or trees. All I'm doing is trying to notice where I see those darker values and the shapes of them. And because this color is transparent, I adjust the value of it by how much paint I spray down. If I want an area lighter, I spray less. And in some of these really darker areas where I guess it's either a tree trunk or some branches come together, I'm basically spraying this paint at 100%, getting it as dark as I possibly can. And for the early stages of this, what I'm doing is focusing on those large areas. You can see that I'm painting in those branches, those things that really stick out to me, the ones that I notice most when I look at the reference. And this is just like drawing or using a traditional paintbrush. I'm just adding them in where I see them. And then once I get some of those major parts in, I'll hold the airbrush a little bit farther back like I'm doing here and then lightly spray some of this paint over the whole area. This is a glaze, and the purpose of this glaze is just to cover up some of that white gesso and make it look like there's something going on, 
behind some of these tree branches. And this is so incredibly easy to do. Anybody can paint this. It's not like using oil paint or acrylics where you have to mix different values, place those down, and then use another brush to help blend them together. You can get all of those values and all those blends just by using the airbrush. It's doing everything for you. Of course, you do have to learn to build up some trigger control, you know, how far back you're pulling on that trigger to spray the correct amount of paint, but that comes naturally with practice. The more you paint, the more you'll get it. And to make this easier and more forgiving, if I accidentally sprayed some areas too dark, I could switch over to an opaque color here. The color I'm switching to is opaque white, and I'm using that directly from the bottle. I'm bumping the PSI up on my airbrush to around 30, just to help spray that thicker paint. And just like that darker transparent color, I'm using this light opaque color to focus on the large areas of light, where I see those really bright highlights. It's pretty obvious in the reference photo, you can see that it's very bright up on top where I guess some light or some sun is coming through the trees. So I want to build that up. I want to get this white paint right into those areas and just hold the airbrush a few inches away from the canvas and kind of spray it straight on. The airbrush sprays a cone shape, so you're naturally going to get those soft circles. If you just hold the airbrush straight on, spray it, you're going to get a nice soft gradient around those edges. And you may have noticed here that the airbrush is kind of out of frame. That's just because I'm holding it pretty far away from the canvas, maybe six, eight inches away, and just letting it softly blend everything together. Even though this white paint is opaque, an airbrush is always spraying a bunch of little dots, so it's going to take a few layers to build this up. Atomized paint from an airbrush is very different from a traditional paintbrush. With a traditional brush, even if you lay down a very thin amount of paint, it's still a lot more than an airbrush is putting down. So it's just much easier to get that opacity with a traditional brush. But of course an airbrush can still do it. It's just about laying down a layer, letting it dry, and then adding some more. And what's going on is that all those little dots are starting to come together with each layer to build up a film of paint. When I sprayed in that white paint, overspray got on the surrounding area, so you can see that it kind of lightened everything up and just brought the contrast down. And that's okay, that's normal with an airbrush, so what I'll do here is I'll switch back over to that transparent green mixture and start working into this area again. This way I could bring up that contrast by darkening those values again, just spraying this paint right over the top. And then with that same color, I'll just work my way down, doing the same thing of just basically drawing in these shapes. Remember that you don't want to hold the airbrush too close for this because that's going to give you a sharper line. You want to make sure you use that airbrush to your advantage. Just back up a little bit and you'll always get those soft transitions and gradients. And you probably noticed already on the reference photo on the left side of the screen that the values get darker in this as we move toward the bottom, toward the forest floor. Because of the trees and the tree canopy, less light is going to be hitting that ground, so it's darker. And so I won't need to mix a darker color for this, I'll just use the same one and spray more of it. When you mix any transparent color and you add it to a bottle, it's always going to look very dark brown or almost black. So when you spray enough of it with the airbrush, it's going to look like that on the canvas. You spray more, it's going to get darker, and that's what I'm doing here at the bottom. But what I like to do is always start lighter, just by spraying less paint, get those major shapes in. Once those are in and in place, then I can start applying more paint, spraying more layers to darken it. As I move along to the bottom here, I want to protect these flesh tones. I don't want this green color getting on top of it. Even if a small amount of overspray from this green color gets onto the flesh tones, it's going to start graying it out. So I want to protect it. And so what I'm doing here is I'm using a shield. This is a freehand shield made by Art Tool. I just line it up along the curve of the shoulder and then I spray some of this paint over to the right. There's a ton of ways to mask off areas. Frisket film is very popular, but sometimes you just want to do it quickly and a shield is the best tool for that. And it's kind of hard to see in this video, but I'm trying to direct the airflow and the paint over to the right where the forest floor is. This way it just helps prevent any of that paint from running underneath the shield, which can happen if you spray too much. And then once I get down a darker value over to the right, I could do the rest in freehand. And again, I'm trying to direct the airflow over to the right. And if you hold the airbrush at a pretty sharp angle, that overspray is going to be cast in that direction. So it can be very helpful. And then once those values are in, this background is pretty much complete. I will be using some more of this white paint to go over the areas a few more times just to kind of blend everything, but it's not really necessary. And when a viewer sees this painting, they're not really paying attention to the background. It's doing its job just by being out of focus. 
It gives the impression that this scene is in the woods, it's in a forest, and because we're all so used to that wide aperture lens effect where things in the background are blurry, it's what we've all seen throughout our lives, film, television, photographs, and so the painting will hopefully give off that effect where it looks like a, a photographic reference. And if you want to add this type of effect into your paintings, the airbrush is without a doubt my favorite tool for doing this. It just makes it so easy to do because you're only using a few colors, you can control all the values with those colors, and the airbrush is doing all the blending for you. If you want to get more advanced, you could just use transparent colors, and that's what I did on the left side of the screen here for this tree trunk. I didn't use any white at all for this, I just used the color sepia, reduced about 10% with distilled water. And it's essentially the exact same technique, except I'm not using any opaques here. I'm just sticking with that transparent sepia. And then to bring up some texture to make it look like there's a bit of focus, not too blurry, I use an eraser, just like I did on the portrait to pull out some highlights. That eraser just adds that little bit of detail and texture to make it look like this area is a bit more in focus than that background. And because I use the airbrush freehand without any sort of shields, I still got that softness. So this area is still going to look out of focus, but not as much so as the forest in the background. So that's it for this video. I hope some of you enjoyed it. It's a simple effect to add to any painting, and it's just so easy to do. But just make sure that if you're coming from any other painting medium, if you are using an airbrush, you always want to make sure that you use a mask to protect yourself, especially when you're painting in larger backgrounds like this, because there's a lot of overspray, and you don't want to be breathing that in. And make sure that you're using an airbrush paint designed for airbrushes. That's very important. Those paints are specifically designed to spray through an airbrush, so it's going to give you a lot less trouble, and it's going to make your painting with an airbrush a lot more enjoyable. I'd like to thank the channel members for their generous support on this channel, and I'd like to welcome the newest members this week. So thank you to Raul Arts, Robert, Lisa, and Leon for rejoining. It's greatly appreciated and welcome. And of course, thank you so much to these incredible people, the channel members scrolling up on the right side of the screen now. Your support really helps keep this channel going, so thank you all so much. And as always, I'll see you guys back here next week.